I bet you didn't know how common PCOS is. Did you know that 1 in 10 women of childbearing age have PCOS? It's a startling statistic that highlights the importance of understanding and managing this condition. Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. I am Dr. Amal Banu. Today we are tackling a topic that affects a lot of women but isn't talked about nearly enough. Polycystic Ovary Syndrome or PCOS. So let's get into it. PCOS is a bit of a mouthful but it stands for Polycystic Ovary Syndrome. It's a complex disorder with two main features, hyperandrogenism, which is just a fancy way of saying too many male hormones, and chronic anovulation, which means not ovulating regularly. Depending on which criteria you use, PCOS affects about 6% to 20% of reproductive aged women. That's a lot of people, and the symptoms usually start showing up during early puberty. Both normal puberty and PCOS can cause irregular periods, difficulty ovulating, and acne. This overlap can make it tricky to spot PCOS early, but we're here to help clear things up. Let's talk about the HPO axis. It stands for hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis. This is a super important system that keeps everything in balance for reproduction. It responds to internal signals like hormones and external factors like the environment. PCOS disrupts this system, causing too much LH hormone, problems with egg development, and immature follicles. It's like a glitch in the system that affects your fertility. Women with PCOS often have more growing follicles that stop developing too soon, leading to symptoms like hirsutism, that's extra hair in places you don't want it, irregular periods, chronic anovulation, and infertility. Symptoms of PCOS can be quite serious. While PCOS can be challenging, laughter is the best medicine. Just don't forget to take your actual medicine too. And PCOS isn't just about ovaries. Even lean women can have issues like higher levels of GABA, affecting hormone balance and insulin resistance, which can happen regardless of weight. The classic signs of PCOS include hyperandrogenism, irregular menstrual cycles, and polycystic ovaries. To diagnose it, doctors often use the Rotterdam criteria, which require two of the three, irregular ovulation, high androgen levels, or polycystic ovaries seen on an ultrasound. Now let's chat about the gut microbiome. It's like a party in your intestines with bacteria, fungi, and viruses. And this party affects everything from digestion to metabolism. Studies suggest that the gut microbiome can influence insulin sensitivity and even play a role in PCOS. Alright, let's get real about lifestyle. One big piece of managing PCOS is how we live. We're talking exercise, diet, and habits. I know, easier said than done, but trust me, it makes a difference. Let's be honest, most of us would rather binge watch a new series than hit the gym, right? But seriously, regular exercise is key. Studies show that moderate to vigorous physical activity for at least 60 minutes a day can really help. So put down that remote and pick up a yoga mat. When it comes to medication, metformin is a go-to. Even though it's off-label for teens, it's widely used to improve insulin sensitivity. Combined oral contraceptive pills help regulate periods and manage acne and spironolactone can help with excess hair. Don't forget regular check-ins with your healthcare provider. They're your partners in managing PCOS, ensuring your treatment plan fits your needs, whether you're transitioning from pediatric to adult care or maintaining your health. Looking ahead, one goal is to prevent PCOS by identifying at-risk girls early and intervening with lifestyle changes. Research is ongoing, especially into genetic and neuroendocrine factors, with some exciting findings around GABA signaling and androgen receptors. So, what's the takeaway? PCOS is a complicated beast, but with the right management, you can keep it under control. Remember, you're not alone. Millions of women are navigating this too. Thanks for sticking with me through this deep dive into PCOS. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and share it with someone who might benefit. And don't forget to subscribe for more health insights. Stay active, stay informed, and we'll see you next time.